Are we starting with a rap? I think your sister's pretty fat. Oh, yeah. When I'm not drunk, I might drive at a tap, dancing classes. When I take all my tests, I'm never passing. <laughs> yeah, I've got big glasses. Just kidding, that's producer Zach. He's also fack. <laughs> fack from the show The Bear. Mm. It's about cooking. With Your mum is pretty good looking. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I had her over last weekend. Over the kitchen table, she did bend. Mm-hmm. Yep. Did bend. <laughs> she asked me around because she needed me to lend her a hand. I gave her two on her big jug. <laughs> <laughs> she thought that me and my boys were a bunch of thugs. But we weren't. We were just coming looking for some milk. And she provided plenty... And she didn't even require any pennies. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of something wrong with that milk. That was shocking. All right, let's get into it then. Let's get into what? I thought we were in the fire in the booth. We are. Fire in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, in the wild, wild west, there existed four degenerates. And yet, these four very irresponsible individuals came together with one noble goal. Get rid of the Sunday scaries. There was the good, the bad, the even worse, and the producer. And together they formed the Sunday Sessions podcast. Let us know if you like those raps and if you're a label listening. Give us some words to rap with next willing, week. Yeah, actually, come in a word and we'll, um, we'll, we'll rhyme that word. First off the bat, you're probably wondering, hat, why? Um, I didn't have a shower before I came here and it's 1.30 in the afternoon. You don't shower? Mm, well, I didn't today. I shaved, but I didn't have a shower, so that's why I'm wearing a hat. And that's why my hair probably looks horrible. Um, but in other news, welcome back to the Sunday Sessions podcast. This is episode 19. 19. So, a lot. Um, if you haven't seen the earlier ones, I'd recommend go giving them a listen. We've had some exciting guests on, such as Dyson Daniels, NBA superstar. Uh, Austin, the winner of Love Island. Misfit Minds boys, they were the worst one we had, but they still came on. Uh, this is a podcast where we help you cure those Sunday blues that you might have from drinking over the weekend. Maybe even doing more than drinking. That's right. I'm not going to say it, but the YouTube viewers know what I'm talking about. Uh, well, we're here to help you guys cure those Sunday blues because we're pretty well versed in feeling bad on a Sunday. And we might offer you some good advice slash just, you know, fucking give you something to listen to so you're not so depressed. Just give you some good advice. Scrolling Uber Eats, nothing's looking good. You should get Hunky Dory. Hunky Dory's great. <laughs> if you're hungover, scrolling Uber Eats, get Hunky Dory. It's the tits. And they've got really good, um, you know, like a chicken skewer thing and chips for 10 bucks. And the potato cakes, well overpriced, but fucking bussin'. I'm one half of your podcast host, Dallo. I uh, make... Horrible vids, and I'm also really rich and famous and jacked and tall, and I'm six foot seven. So yeah, <laughs> I'm also joined by my co-host Ben. That's right. My name's Ben. I'm the other host. And you may be thinking, didn't last week? Weren't we promised a special guest? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Blake Pavey, TikTok superstar comedian, just well known, good guy, funny guy. He um he pulled out. He dogged us. Yeah. And we asked him, we said, Blake, why? You, you promised you would come. What's the go? And he just provided the worst excuse ever. So I'm drunk. So we're never speaking to him again. Blake, if you're listening, we're not friends anymore. Mm. Don't contact us. And uh, watch your back. Because but he, we're coming for you. He's going to be on next week. So tune in <laughs> next week to hear us with Blake. Um, yeah. So but we had a segment last week that you guys uh, seem to have loved. Not even sure because last week it's not out. But um, we're talking about house wars. And a lot of you are probably at that age where you live with housemates. Um, specifically, if you're a group of boys, you probably fight a lot, argue a lot about dumb shit because boys are going to generalize here, typically pretty lazy uh, when it comes to housework. And last week we started the episode on a very fiery note with a bunch of insults thrown at each other. And we're like, fuck you, Zach. Fuck you, Ben. You... you you do this around the house. Ben, you eat these things that are weird. Zach, you fall asleep a lot. But we don't want to start with the same energy this week. 
uh, in an angry tone and way. So we're going to start this week with another segment called uh, Part 2 to House Wars from last <laughs> week. <laughs> it's really just a chance for us to fucking say all the shit that annoys us that, mm. that we do. Because when we're at home, we don't want to say all this shit because it'll take away from the sexual tension. Yeah. So we would rather get her out in the professional workspace because we can't really do anything. Personally, here. I don't really like doing this because you guys are really, really good friends of mine. Mm. But I do have a lot of things that annoy, and I'm happy to share it. So I'll please think- do because I couldn't actually think of anything else because you guys are so perfect and such good mates. Shut up. Um, <laughs> okay. So for those listening, what we like to do most evenings is sit in our living room on the couch, watch a movie or a TV show that we're all watching together. And once, this is something that Liam does every single night. Once me. Liam sits on the couch, I, me. he won't get up for anything. Mm. And he'll like, at any time someone gets up to like get their drink bottle or gets up to fucking moves to scratch their knee, Liam will be like, oh, because you're already up, can you can you get this oh. from the kitchen for me? Or can you fill mm. up my water bottle? Or can you get me an ice cream from the fridge? And he just waits. I hear what he you're saying. He waits in the shadows, waits for you to get up and move. And then he'll be like, oh, because you're already up, can you just do this for me? Mm. And he's, he's just like, like a hawk. He's just he's, like got the keen eye and he's just got his feelers out there. And it's not like it's once or twice a night. It's like six or seven multiple okay. times he'll ask people to do it and it gets more and more outraged one time he asked me to quickly mow the lawns and we don't even have lawns in our back <laughs> in our backyard let's just um address what you're saying because you aren't valid and nothing that you think is real is but uh, uh the great man who as a, uh, all right let me speak much <laughs> yeah. yeah you're rattled <laughs> so there was a there's a great man who's walking this earth whose first name is gary and last name is v e e and he once said i'm assuming work smarter not harder and some people would see that and go ah oh, gary fuck it. what are you talking about doesn't doesn't mean anything to me to me i was thinking to myself fuck here's a, a way i can implement into my life less uh, bone stress, getting up all the time, up and down, but stress on your bones. Um, heart rate increasing and decreasing, getting up. Me not wanting, me can't be fucked to go get a maxi bond from are the freezer. Buying, are you buying this shit? Jack? Absolutely not. And on the topic of Gary V, um, he actually slid into my DMs once. So uh, you just had to throw that in there, didn't you? It's just, um, am I better than everyone? Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not really that fucking dog if you're already it up. It is, no, because even if like... I'm not waiting. I'm just... I see you and I'm like, oh, I, I wanted a maxi bond 10 Yeah, but ago. if you did it maybe once every now and again, it would be all right because it's like... Uh, so you call me a like, fat slob. Yeah. Call maybe. Liam a fucking force field the way he's deflecting right now. Oh, so Dr. <laughs> Deflection over <laughs> there reckons he'll chime No, in. because like you'll, mo- you'll get up to fucking... Can we turn the heater off, please, Zach? I don't know why it's ever on. Is it? Not, um, Why is it so fucking hot? Sorry, go on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of us will so, get yeah, you're up. Surprised I didn't make you go get up for that. Yeah, I actually am. Yeah, yeah. One of us will get up to get our phone or to to I don't know turn a light off or something, and then it's just oh while you're up, can you grab something from the kitchen for me? Can you make me dinner? I can think, you do this? Can you do I, that? I, 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 and you know what's the most annoying thing? Oh, here we go. Is the fact that you're the only one in the house that really does it. It's a, it's yours. Like, uh, if we were doing it as well, it'd be like a fair trade off. Mm. And it's like, oh, well, we're all doing it, but we we're not doing it as well. I think I'm gonna add something to your point that I hate that I do, but I'm never gonna stop. Is and you guys are both gonna go. Oh, <laughs> is clicking oh, when yeah. I want you to do something. That's so fucking annoying. <laughs> but also in that. saying that. It's just rude. As you go, I was waiting because I was hoping it was going to happen, and it did. These two bully me in a duo. They team up on me like in The Simpsons. You know how Bart gets bullied by fucking Nelson and his two mates? Whatever the names are. The one with the beanie and the other cunt. That's what it's like for me. I'm Bart, and they're the ones bullying me in a group setting because, you know, they just need strength in numbers because no one wants to fight me one-on-one because I'm too fucking big. It's because you're so hot when you're getting bullied. Yeah, well, 
Anyway, household quarrels. I I don't really have any more about you guys because I thoroughly enjoy living with you both. So, oh no, <laughs> something Zach does that fucks me yeah, right here off. It goes. And Ben will agree. Is so Zach, we talked last week about Zach's lack of iron. And when I said negative 100, it's probably less than that. But he'll always, without fail, wake up earlier than everyone, fuck off for, to who knows where for how long. We'll all get up. And then as we're getting up and getting ready to do something, he'll be coming back from the gym and he'll always have so much, like too much energy and be bouncing around the house like a fucking pinball machine. Just like, yeah, oh, like gladly. shirt off. Like, I'm so fucking boo. And like, oh, did you guys like blah, 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 blah. And like say all this shit. And like just be bouncing around 100 miles an hour. And then he'll be like so energized. And then two hours later, he'll be like fighting to stay awake. Yeah. You know, and, and those things... bounce around periods are yeah, very hard to be And it's just like around. a fucking tornado in the mm. house when he's walking Cycling around. Cycling Zach fucking rips through the fuck. I was going to say our address, but I realized I can't say that. <laughs> The, another thing that Zach does that oh, pisses me, me off is he will set alarms in the morning <laughs> and like snooze them. Mm. And obviously I hear it because our rooms are next to each other. And I'm just, I do that too though. Too. And by the fourth time, I'm like, surely he, the cunt's getting up now. Surely he's getting up. And then he'll just snooze it again. I'm like, Zach, buddy, you can't keep doing this. I'll man. get up. Eventually. Yeah, but you if just set an alarm I'm, when I'm you just, need to get up and I'm, then get up there. I'm just trying to better you, Ben, and make you get up early as well. So Ugh. let's just, while we're on the topic of you cunts teaming up on me, address the recent video that you guys might have seen on the Misfit Minds YouTube channel where <laughs> there was two rats in the house who teamed up on me. You'd think if I was trying to prank Nick and infiltrated those boys, Will and Seb, they would both go, yeah, 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 we'll help you. We'll be rats. And instantly start planning with Nick how to prank me when I'm thinking I'm pranking them. That's what they would do. One billion percent. But all they needed to do was, hey, Ben, do you want to be a rat? Oh, yes. Please. Zach, do you want to be a rat? Yeah, yeah, I'll do I'll do whatever you need. I'll do whatever you need. I'll kill him. I'll kill him if you want. And so I was in my house innocently on the phone to my mum. Zach kept coming in. Like hinting that I needed to get out. I was like, oh, I thought you were filming with Blake. So why the fuck do you want me to come off the phone? Just fuck off. And then I eventually come out and Zach is just putting his absolute all into fucking making sure this prank on me goes well. He's doing his zooms around the house. Cyclone Zach's out in full force. And then he's like, oh, Liam, we need to go out the backyard to film a YouTube video. And I was like, oh, my my YouTube video doesn't need to be filmed outside. I, I can just do it inside. And he says, and his panic brains, his panic caffeine gym brain starts fucking going a million miles. This, the hamster that's on the wheel in his brain starts sprinting. Mm. Going, <laughs> and then Zach goes, well, we need to go outside because we need to film a video for um, the other channel. I go, okay, bit weird. Zach had written a whole YouTube video that needed to be filmed outside purely so that he could help me get <laughs> Well, this that. is a video I already had. Written, kind it of. just so, sounds like you're mad can, sad can you that you got pranked and you're story? playing the victim yeah. card, okay, bro. Okay, so I'll just finish the story. <laughs> I went out the back and I was filming, probably fucking killing it. And then I would, whenever I would ho hover over to the side of the house where you can see the front of the yard, Zach would just be like a fucking parent when their kid was like, is it the theme parks or train whatever, running off? Mm. <laughs> yeah, train tracks. And go, no, come back. We we need you to stand over here. And obviously me not suspecting anything, I was not thinking, fuck, I'm about to get pranked. I was just thinking like, Zach is so weird. <laughs> and then anyway, we finished filming and I'm inside just like, oh, I'm a bit exhausted. And because uh, I was on the phone to mum about tax reasons and tax is just so fucked and it's exhausting. So I was tired and I had been to the gym, I'm pretty sure. So I was just like, done. And then I get a knock at the door and I think, oh, Who's this? Go up. Hey, mate, are you selling an air fryer? And I was just like, oh, fuck me. Like, I knew straight away it was the Mr. Yeah. Minds boys. But yeah. I was like, that's pretty funny. They sent a random person to the house. And then I told him no, and he was, like, nice about it. So I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. Like, there would just be one. And then I, like, go back into the, lou like, into the lounge room, whatever, and I hear another knock at the door. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Go back. Different cunt. Are you selling an air fryer? 
No, I'm not. I'm not selling one. And then they just all keep coming. And I'm like, it's weird that they would send this many people to the house. And this is clearly getting a bit out of control considering they don't believe me. And like, I don't know, really know what's going to happen here. And then Zach's just filming the whole thing, which for some reason I didn't find suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Just filming Why, the whole What did you think when you saw him yeah. filming? I thought when he was filming, I was just like, oh, obviously it's like funny behind the scenes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To just like, yeah. I don't know, have. And the cameras were in his hands already. So I was like, whatever. But mm. little did I know, Snake Boy Zach was fucking working for the ops. And then all these people just kept piling in and getting beefy and then... I was looking at Ben and Zach, Zach just filming, not having my back at all. Blake fucking didn't even know it was a prank, ran back inside all scared. <laughs> yeah, he was fucking... <laughs> he was he didn't want to bar it. And ben was just like sucking and I was like, fuck, what is... Like, why am I the only one here who's like standing out the front talking to these people? And then, yeah, it turns out I got pranked and it's all because of these two, you two cunts. Yeah, it was so great. So what do you guys have to say in your defense? Prank. It was gr- it was great organizing, a great prank and, and great viewing when we watched it back. So What do you reckon I you think... would have done in the same situation? <clears throat> I don't know. I think you handled it pretty well, but now you're just mad that you got pranked. I'm yeah. not mad. I'm well, hot and bothered. Why did you take your rage out and put holes in the walls of, at our house after the cameras went off? No comment. <laughs> no, it was it was very well organized. No, what do you reckon you would have done? I wasn't speaking because I don't want to. What do you reckon you would have done? I don't know. I wasn't being pranked. I I did when it was happening. I was like, "Fuck, Liam is handling this well," and I was like, "I sort of expected you to just walk back inside because that's what they thought you're gonna do, and you just be like, I'm not dealing with that, like, and just mm. shut the door, mm. and because they were like, if that happens, then." You're gonna have to like to me. I was like, you're gonna have to get him outside by saying by saying something. What do you reckon you would have said? I would have been like, oh, they're stealing our shoes or some shit like that. I and think the way we positioned ourselves kept him outside as well because it was like me and you were kind of blocking the other door into yeah, our house. Entrance. So Liam, was oh, like, and Blake forced. was taking up the whole house yeah. hiding himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Liam was just stuck standing out there. Looking and when like they were taking fool. the shoes, I was like, these are your guys' shoes, so I'm not gonna fucking fight someone over your shoes. You yeah. can go fight them. Yeah, no, you did well. And and um, if you haven't seen the video, go watch it because it is very, very funny. Yeah, look. And the fucking actors that they oh, got yeah. were elite. The, they mm, were so good. The like um, Indian dude was yeah. fucking unreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were fucking... They, they all did all so good. well. Mm. I knew it was a prank. And um, at one stage, there's this guy who like kicks our bin and hits our bin with a stick. And I, and I was in on it And I was like yeah. Scared I was like Fucking hell This is getting a bit out of control Mate I was in the window filming And they were like Look there's a camera You're clearly pranking us To Liam And I was still like Oh fuck should I be filming here I'm like oh, wait, They're all like Yeah Yeah Well So you're just mad And you're prank. upset That it happened to you mm, Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nah I think it's funny And I'm a good sport about it But I'm also like sad Because I'm like Fuck There's just nothing You could do to prank them yeah. yeah, we can think of something. We, I, I've kind of been workshopping something. We've been talking about. It. I don't think I've told you yet. Yeah. But Unless got, we burn their house, I've got some pretty, which they still wouldn't care about. I think the key to pranking them is doing like small, like grand pranks are like near impossible to do on them because they would sniff it from a mile away. And also, like they, there's, there's nothing that parts. they really like. I feel like care about enough that's material that you could like. Yeah, them by, oh. you couldn't prank them by stealing one of their fucking vans because they would not care. Yeah, let's uh, just steal. You could burn their house down and they wouldn't care, or like steal their plaques, they wouldn't care. We'd have to fucking kidnap one of their parents and just hold. I like still a gun feel like they would in front of them. They'd just be like, "Oh, well, I know this is a prank. Let's just take the TV remote." Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> well, a that's devious. Pretty good. That's devious. It's a share house. We'll take their toaster. Well, that's yeah. that's true. If we do things that are like just minor inconveniences, but just do a bunch of them, then that would kind of when they the Facetimed shit. me, and they're like, "Oh, you shit on the fuck in the bath." And yeah. it was that it ended up being the cat, but they were fully convinced I'd done it. We should. I should. Well, I wish I did that. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I shit in their bath. We should just go to their house and shit in different spots every yeah. time. <laughs> That'd be good. Oh, well, now we've fucking told them we're gonna do it. So. Yeah. Well, they don't listen to this rubbish podcast. Mm. On a I'd, lighter note, though. Yeah. Uh, shout out the fucking Matildas, the oh, Tillies, yeah. Aussie Socceroos, mm. the um, if, so, women Socceroos, the women. Australian World Cup team in soccer is fucking killing it. One over all the hearts of everyone in this country. One over the hearts of me. 
Yes, I would. I did play four years of soccer uh, for Albury. Was it Albury Saints? No, Albury somethings. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck dear. Albury City. I played for Albury City uh, for four years growing up as a kid. So I did have a little bit of interest in soccer, but then it completely went away when I started playing footy. And um, they've reignited that. Yeah, it's, it's been fucked watching yeah, them. Mate. At the start, it was like, oh, the Matildas are playing and it's a Oz World Cup. Like, that's pretty cool. Mm. But now it's like all anyone is talking about. Like, you walk down the street and be like, oh, did you see the Matildas game? If I go to like the local bottle near my house, there's this like Italian woman who works there. I think she's Italian. And I was talking to her about the Matildas and now we have a friendship. And if you're listening, shout out to you because... You're a fucking legend, but she's just a great energy. Cause like you walk in somewhere and you're not really close with someone, and you're like, "Did you watch the Matildas game?" And then it's instantly like, "Oh, I was here watching. I was here watching it." Mm. And it's so cool to just see all of Australia get around a team like this. And I was at Crown in the sports bar watching it, which is like you go to Crown Casino and it's like upstairs. And I, I went up this escalator and I was I got there before I keep to my mates and it was fucking packed. And um. Then, like, it got so full in there that there was, like, a line to get in. in the sp- There was a line within Crown in- to get in the sports bar. And it was, like, people waiting there for so long. You were the only one at the sports bar? I was early? the only one at the sports bar. Yeah. Producer Zach was there. Blake, who we won't speak about, was there. Dyson was there. Fucking everyone was there. And um, I went up and it was just me, Zach, Zake. <laughs> me, Zach, and Blake. And... Um, the line to get a drink was so fucking yeah. long and like chicks were just like p- pushing in and like chicks get served first because they don't care and then anyway we um, had to make Blake just get us a standing spot not even a seat yeah, or anything well, everyone there was pretty much like if you had a seat in there it would have been sick but yeah. we were just standing and then um, I went up to the bar and I was like oh can I get six Coronas please and he's like oh do you have six mates and I was like oh yeah yeah they're over there and then he just cracked six and I was like fuck yeah and then me, Zake... Zake. Zake. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> me, Zake and Blake were... Yeah, we were standing there and then our mates came, but they had to like line up for fucking ages. And then um, we were like to the security guard because Dyson got there after pretty much all of us were in. And we're like, oh, when our mate gets here, can he just come straight in? Like he's an NBA player and he does like... He doesn't want to get swarmed. He won't want to get swarmed or some shit. Just like trying to get him in so he could fucking get in mm. ahead of the line. And then the dude was like, nah, like, I don't know who he is and stuff. I'm like, oh, you've never, like, like, you don't support the NBA or anything. And he's like, oh, nah, I don't, like, know who he is. And then he rocked up and the dude, like, he was wearing, like, all of his jewelry and shit. And then some, du- like, dudes were getting... F- <coughs> Sorry. Some dudes were getting a photo with him. And then the security guard instantly was just like, oh, is he actually in the NBA? I'm like, yeah, he's a fucking... Oh, what? And then he was like... Oh, and they're like, oh, can you just like get him in so he doesn't get swarmed by people? And then he's like, oh, yeah, all right. And then like the security guard just like let him in. And um, yeah, so we're all in there. And then there was this old dude next to us and he just started talking to me and Blake because Blake was posting a Snapchat or Instagram story and like saying something. I can't remember what it was, but this old dude yeah, next no, to him he was pissing himself. He was like, pushing the back umpire. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and this old dude was like, Nah, I'm like, a, I'm a AFL man myself. I've never really had any interest in soccer. Don't understand it at all. And I was like, oh yeah, it's pretty like, it's cool because like even people who don't really care about soccer that much are still getting around the Matildas. And he's like, and how good's that? You know, like all, all the Aussies just love getting around each other. No matter what the sport is, we just all support each other. And I was like, you know what? You fucking old bastard. You're so <laughs> right. Like the Aussies love fucking getting around when when Australia is doing something yeah, well. Yeah, and we're doing fucking well in everything. Like the f- basketball World Cup, the we did well in the soccer World Cup, and now we, the women's World we Cup. We just won the netball World Cup. We did beat we? we beat uh, England in the netball World uh, Cup. well, yeah, it's fucking great to see. And I was when we won the penalty shootouts, my voice was instantly gone. My ears were like ringing. I thought one of my eardrums was going to burst. It was so loud in there. And I was just like squealing, saying, fuck, blah, 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 some dumb shit. And there was this group of French people in front of us. And they were like oh. fucking yelling in our face. When it, There was like two girls and a boy. They were like yelling in our face whenever France would kick a goal, uh, penalty. And then we were just silent. And then when Australia would kick one, we were in their face. And then at the end when <laughs> we won, we were like... A, like as close to assaulting someone as you can be without like yeah. touching them. Well, <laughs> just they, like jumping all around and going like, wee wee, and then being, oh, it was bad. Because I, 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 I've got like a little bit of insider info on those French people. I went to the toilet at one point. 
and some like old Aussie guy was just like drunk and he's like to the bloke next to him he's just like oh fuck how good are the tillies and then the guy goes oh I am French and then the guy goes oh really oh well we'll still get around you whatever and then we go out and he's one of the three people in front of us and every single time they like kicked a penalty or something like that they'd like turn around and like flip us off and be like yelling at it like mm. oh, oh oh so then when we got up we were just like fuck you cunt fuck you French I think this fucks. is a good example of no one likes the French yeah <laughs> What do they have going for them? Isn't it funny, though, that we're like the polar opposite countries. Like, whenever someone says, oh, they're French, you automatically assume they're a fucking asshole. And whenever someone says, in a, like, anywhere in the world, oh, they're Australian, you automatically assume they're a legend. Yeah. Welcome back to the most racist podcast in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight is... Uh, this will be... I don't know if the World Cup will be over when this one comes out, but it's the Australia-England game tonight, and mm. we're booked into a pub... To the Richmond Bowls Club. Richmond Bowls Bowls Club, baby. Richmond (laughs) Bowls Club to watch it. And it's going to be fucking... And the Basketball World Cup's on before it. And I'm in it, yeah. But can you just cancel footy? No, not a chance. How good's making a booking at a pub? No one is going to be a... Fuck ton of people mm. there. Well, I don't know if there'll be just... that many people there. No one would be thinking, let's go to the Richmond Bowls Club to watch it. Nah, there'll be a few. The fucking 500 people Hopefully there's just a heap of old, old people there. Who are we inviting? Everyone. In Melbourne. I haven't invited anyone, really. Neither. We said that about our fucking house party and people showed up, so... Speaking of lawn bowls, uh, the Richmond Bowls Club, we've uh, become locals at the at the Richmond Bowls Club because the other day... Become was, locals because we've been there once. <laughs> yeah, well, they love us. Because it, it was a nice sunny day in Melbourne, which it, which it has been. Few and far between. And we're like, fuck, what are we going to do? We'll play tennis now. We've been playing a fair bit of tennis. We want to have a beer because it's so nice. And we're like, let's go have a roll. Barefoot bowls. Mm. Wander on down to the to the local bolo, which is now our local boozer. And it was like walking into the gates of heaven. Mm. First thing we see is a sign that says $4 Coronas. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, this, this, this must be... Uh, they must be old beers or off beers or something. And I was speaking to the lovely British lady behind the bar and I said, what's the go with this $4 Corona business? And she said, oh, we just ordered way too many Coronas. So we're just flogging them off for four bucks. Mm. And I said, this is this was the right choice that we made today. And then a second immediate uh, W for the place, free pool table. Yeah. Pool table's a bit dodgy, a bit sketchy. But for f- like... What's the Rising Sun one? $4 yeah. with coins? Yeah. $3 on the machine? That is fucked. Pool tables are getting way too expensive. Yeah. Should be like a dollar a game. And now... So that's free. So that's fucking elite. And then Lawn Bowls is so much fun. Mm. It is so good. It's an addicting game. Yeah. Having a few beers, having a roll, shooting the shit with the old people out there. Yeah. And it helps when you're fucking elite at it like we are. And another thing as well is... um. At the Richmond Bowls Club, we're gonna f- we should be getting paid to go there. Yeah, we pretty much are with how free everything is, and uh, there's f- complimentary tea, coffee, and biscuits, and the biscuits were fucking great. <laughs> so, so pretty much everyone just get down yeah. to the Richmond Bolo. Are we yeah. going there after this, Zach? Uh, yeah, fuck. Fuck Ben. Oh, I've got something to do, but what? Like, nah. Edit a clip. Mm-mm. <laughs> we're having a roll in the sun. I reckon we start recording the podcast there. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be so good. In uh, the smokers, sucking back a few fucking darts. Nah, we'll just do it on the green. <laughs> yeah, true. What do you call the green in a rolling club of green? Yeah, uh, the pitch. Pitch. The basketball court. Uh, Zach, do you have... Sorry. Do you have... Uh, can we do the beer review now? Because I'm toey. Uh, After all that beer talk. Liam is a fucking alcoholic. Okay. You're not an alcoholic if you love it. Ben, what is a beer review? Because I don't, I'm not sure what that could be. Um, beer review is where producer Zach goes on a journey. Like shitload. Yeah, no, he's mm, a fuckhead. Terrible. Goes on a journey throughout the week and finds a beer. Mm. Can be any beer. Can be any drink. Has finds, to- I'd say discovered is a better yeah. word. Discovered. More, more like the beer finds him. Yeah. It must yeah. come. It must come to him in like a dream or something like mm. that. And he go, he's been all around the world. And if you haven't listened to him, even if you don't like us, you don't like our voices, you don't like what we speak about, mm. just listen to each beer review every week. Mm. Because we if do you a don't like that... Compilation. Yeah, we should. Because if you don't like the beer review stories and you don't like the 
quests that he goes on, which are all true, by yeah, the way. Every which are all one true. Of them yeah, if you don't nice. like them, then fucking take a good hard look at yourself. Yeah. So mm. pretty much in a nutshell, Zach goes and gets a beer, I review it, and I give it a rating, which yes. we don't ever log down because we don't have a whiteboard and we've been talking about <coughs> getting one for weeks, but who cares? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that introduction. Uh, this week's beer review begins about a week ago and it was me on Instagram. About a week ago. Sorry. <laughs> you can't say about a week ago and not expect it. So yeah, go on. I quit. Thank <laughs> fuck. All right. Yeah, no, I was on Instagram and started noticing a pattern. About a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I started noticing a pattern. That pattern being fucking Europe. First story, Greece. Next one, London. One after that, Sweden. Just kept on going. I swear to God, I spent a fucking hour going through stories saying nothing but blue water, croissants, and the fucking sun while mm. we were in shitty, cold Melbourne winter. We are at the Bowls Club, so evens out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, I think I've got two options. I could stay at home like a little bitch, wallow in my sadness. I could stay bullets in a spray. <laughs> <laughs> so, again... Yeah, okay. And uh, I, yeah, so I could stay home, wallow in my sadness in the winter of Melbourne and just be a little bitch. Or I could empty my life savings into a flight to Europe and join everyone that's there. So I go with option two. So I get there. I land and I step out of the airport. I don't know where in Europe I am, by the way. I just fucking booked a flight over there. It said Europe, whatever. And with the amount of fucking stories I'd seen on Instagram, I was expecting to run into someone that I knew in the first five minutes. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So I go up to a guy and ask him if he's seen any Aussies around. <laughs> he goes, Hey, it's me, a Mario. <laughs> I say, Nice to meet you, Mario, but I'm looking for some Aussies. I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> Then he goes, Hey, <laughs> me and my brother Luigi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is low hanging fruit, Dad. <laughs> I'm thinking, fuck this. So I go to leave, but then Mario says the magic words. I'm going to stop doing the accent because fuck that. Do no, no, yeah, you got to do it. <laughs> do you want to go to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to tell me twice, Mario. So Mario takes me to the pub, only it's not a pub. It's his mum's basement. Mm. I walk in, him and Luigi lock the door behind me. Uh-oh. <laughs> they start walking towards me. I'm backing up. Mario says, would you like us some magic mushrooms? That was fucking weird. I shake my head and keep backing up till I'm stuck in the corner. Then I'm looking around, scared, sweating bullets. They're creeping towards me. Luigi's got a fucking butcher's knife. Then I go into fight or flight. I fucking jump up stomp on one of their heads, stomp on the other one's heads like mm. they're fucking goombas. And then while they're dazed, I run up like to the Like they're door. fucking, what's, what's that? Goombas. What's a goomba? They're the things in the Mario games like that you jump on. Okay. Ah. Yeah. I thought they were mushrooms. No. Well, okay. they are. They're, they're the mushrooms in the game that you jump on, I think. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, while they're dazed, I run up to the door and start trying to bash it over. Mario and Luigi are starting to come too. I'm still bashing. Then Mario starts sprinting at me. I jump out of the way. He fucking runs straight through the door and makes a hole. So I jump through the hole he made and run out. Also, I grab a beer out of the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is today. Oh my God. That was the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. I had to make the itinerary this morning and go on that adventure. Thanks a lot, Blake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blake. This is, if, yeah. yeah. Just blame it all on Blake. Send, blame it all on Blake. Send Blake your best hate messages that you can. And at the end of it, sign off by saying, This is from the Sunday Sessions podcast. Yeah. They, and let's preface that by saying, It's a joke, YouTube. We don't want people to do that. Look. Wink, wink. <laughs> not all the stories were going to be good. I fucking. You got to take was, the good yeah, with the bad. I was bound to get a bad But one. the main thing happened. The, the main moral of the story is that it still happened and that yeah, it's true that's true and then and, and that it. zach lives these experiences yeah. for you guys the listeners and i almost got kidnapped by fucking mario and luigi yeah. man do your best tiktok growl thing <laughs> okay <laughs> let's see it boy <laughs> oh. oh my god you just fucking shook it so for those listening, it is probably one of the best beers created. One of the best day day beers of all time. Oh, the, Shizzle. Just any time beers. So clearly I was in Italy. Yeah. Beer. It's a it's a Peroni red. It's a Peroni mm. red with no bottle opener. 
And if you haven't had a Peroni Red, and I've passed here. If you've never had a Peroni Red before. Oh. All right. Um, oh, there we go. That's huge. Okay, Peroni Red. It's an Italian beer. And it's fucking great. It's just a... I don't know what else to say about it. Besides, every party that I went to at Xavier, my old school, like every 18th, it was like supplied alcohol. It was always like BB's... Carlton Dry's Peroni Reds apple ciders. They love this. I didn't and realize that Peroni Reds were doing questions on the bottle cap. <laughs> oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, what, what, what does it say? It says, what are the chances that once finished recording the podcast... Fuck, that's specific. That is long that's too. Weird. What are the chances that we all go to the Richmond Bowls Club and drink ourselves silly? God. Um, A, 100%. And there's no other... Options. Shit. 100, 100%. I think that's it. I think that's got, we have to do it. Can you cancel right. footy? Drink your beer and shut up. Can you cancel footy? And come have a roll and just go, I'll train next time. See, this is what he does. He mm. just get he wheels his way in to your subconscious and he says, for, for him saying that I'm the bad influence on him and I'm the devil on each shoulder... This is proof. Okay. How that he many... wants me to not go to footy training and just drink beers okay, instead. Okay, just answer me just answer me this then. Right How on. often's footy training? Be honest. One uh yeah, once a week. What once twi- tw- twice a week. Twice a week, yeah. Okay. How often are the Matildas gonna play England I'm still gonna the... watch the game. Ah, bop, bop. How often are the Matildas gonna play England in the women's World Cup semi final? At the Richmond Bowls Club with the sun out on a day like this in Melbourne with bowls able to be bowled and we're going to be 23. How many times? Once. That'll, be, that'll happen once. Yeah. Ever. Not twice a week, once. <laughs> so the way I see it, it's just a game of eliminations. You can eliminate one from twice a week and you still have ooh, heaps of fucking footy trainings. Think about that, guys, while I skull this beer. I'll give you a little taste test first. Mm. Peroni Red tastes like the feeling you get looking at other people's Instagrams, uh, like posts of them in Europe. Mm. If you, you taste it mm. and you feel for a split second, like it flashes before your eyes that you're there doing that. And then you go back to reality and you have FOMO again. But for every time you take a sip, you get like teleported there for that experience. Yeah. Like, so it's a good, it's a good experience. It's a, yeah. It's a great experience. Yeah. It's a, it's a great beer. I'm going to go ahead and give a Peroni Red. As a day beer, I almost think it's top three day beer. And it's not three? Um, could be three. Mm. Uh, overall, though, I'm going to give a Peroni Red a nine out of ten. Wow. It's a high rating. That's huge. High rating. They're a fucking good beer. For a good beer. Nice. That was way too fucking cold. Ha. <laughs> That's beers. Sick. Um, do you want to provide your fans with an update on exchange? Liam? Yeah, this is this is for everyone watching this or listening to this. This is an update on the exchange series universe. I started the exchange when in uh, I want to say May or June 2020, and basically how it happened is I made a video called "Waking Up for School in Australia vs America." And I made it and I sent it to Ben and he said, mm, not sure it's your best. I don't know if you should post it or not. And I thought, ah, oh, fuck, maybe he's right. But I had nothing else to post that day. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I'm, I'm, I'm averaging like 8,000 views of TikTok anyway. So who gives a fuck? Posted it. Um, got a million views overnight and I gained like 80K followers in a day. And then I got like 200K followers in like a week. And the video has like 12 and a half million views and it blew up. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to rinse and repeat that like Australia versus America shit because people seem to love it. And then, um, yeah, it basically turned into like the characters within that world of me making those TikToks became Meso and Chaz and then it became a whole series and then I ended up posting like fucking hundreds of TikToks and YouTube videos that total probably has like 100 million views across everything. And it was very successful and it really made me made my whole entire social media career a, a thing and possible. But as with all good things, you kind of just get fucking sick of it. Like I feel like I made literally every single joke there is to make about 
those two and like characters like Australia versus American characters. Mate, we had and we had made like episodes of the Australian or like the most recent one we did where they were just full on like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, we like we really made like fucking twelve minute mm. highly produced with like other actors episodes of them, but it was just like getting to a point where I was like, oh fuck, it's just there's a big core fan base for it, but I feel like in regards to attracting new audiences and like how easy it was it was just getting to the point where it was way too hard to do it unless i had like a fucking production team so yeah pretty much it's not really like something that i'm posting anymore but in saying that i um would 1000 percent develop it into a tv show if the opportunity ever arose because i think that it's a great story and its success is like proven to the listeners how good of a story it is and how much there is an audience for like that uh, dynamic of like Australian and American students at school. And um, yeah, I that's kind of where it's at with that. But if anyone owns like Netflix or your dad owns <laughs> Netflix and you want me to make it into a show, I already have a fucking pilot written and a pitch deck. So, so you're a sellout. Yeah, pretty saying. much. Is if anything, it'd go to TV. And if not, then yeah. pretty much... As dead as Ben's rap career. We're going to continue making American versus Australia content, but the exchange series, like those characters, yeah. that's not going to be no, around no. in like new form media. Maybe I'll make an R.I.P. Meso and Chaz video. Thank mm. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you see that Tory Lanez went to jail? Or it is going to jail? Yeah, 10 years. And you know why? Because he was speaking out against the rap industry. Speaking out against us. He was speaking... Yeah. No, but I was going down the... Um, I, I don't know why, but I've seen well, so many conspiracy theory videos on my For You now about like um, that white or white party. Like, um, Just a quick side note. What would our rap duo name be? Fat Boy and Slim. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good as. Um, yeah, no, Tory Lanez, basically for anyone who doesn't know anything about anything, he shot Meg The Stallion... Apparently, allegedly in the foot, and he's just gotten convicted of ten years jail. Which the biggest problem with this is Tory Lanez is five foot three. Yeah. So him in jail is fucked. And with a voice like that, he's yeah. going to be asked to sing for some people. Yeah. But yeah. they're going to make him sing. I feel it. like in court they should have been presented all the evidence. They're going to fuck him in the showers. <laughs> <laughs> presented all the evidence. <laughs> And they're just like, oh, all right. So it's clear that you probably did it. And then his lawyer goes, they go, What's, what have you got to say in Mr. Mr. Lanes's defense? He goes, nothing. Not, I don't have anything to say. And he goes, well, what's your defense? He goes, well, I'll, I'll put it on for you. Puts on the Aiden Ross like freestyle that he did. Yeah. And he's like, Probably not as good as ours, but it's up there. Probably not as good. And then he'd put, they'd put that on the go. We can't have this guy getting fucking bummed in jail because he's way too good at rapping. Yeah. And another note about Tory Lanes is he duetted a TikTok that I was in. And so did Jimmy Fallon and Juventus and KFC Spain. And uh, yeah. I don't Just know. you were in? You're really bad at including other people. Oh, what? Do you want me to tell everyone of the 15 cunts that were in it? Fucking hell, Zach. Yeah, so always wants to grab Say the other s- person in the room that was in it. <laughs> I want to be in there. Right, let's do another segment of House Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what do you wager on the whole Tory Lanez thing? And have you gotten down the Illuminati rabbit hole with him like exposing the music industry and being outspoken about it and now he's gone to jail for 10 years? Nah, I, I, when he got sent to jail, I was like, oh, uh, probably shouldn't go around shooting people. <laughs> and I really just couldn't give a fuck about it. But I do find it funny that he's five three and going to jail, because have you seen that video of him standing up from he's like on the talk show like and rapping. he's losing his hair like really bad is he yeah Ugh. so he's losing it life he's ta- he's like rapping on the thing no the Illuminati's losing his hair for him that's what they take first do you reckon we get bad karma because we're talking shit about him and he's a king down um nah I'm more worried about the Illuminati karma. Yeah, true. But, well, well, we'll wish Tory Lanez all the best if you're listening. Friend good luck. He's a friend I'm of the sure pod. I'm sure they have. Um, uh, they'd have some uh, freestyle rap competitions in jail. I'm sure uh, the basketball team I wouldn't try out for that, but um, you can definitely rap, play chess. Probably get really good at chess. Anyway, what I was going to say, 
is um ah oh, fuck now I've lost it. Now I've lost it. Yeah, I buy a salad and I toss it. I walk around with a poly pocket mm. in my pocket. Um, we can't get in rapping my pocket. We just keep doing it. I pull out my I gun and then I cock it. About oh, fucking yeah. Tory Lanez. Oh yeah, he was on this radio show freestyling, and then he stood up, and he, it's like the meme was. He stood up from the chair, but his height stayed the exact same. And if you go watch the video, it's ridiculous how much his height stayed the same. Like, if I stand up from this chair, I'm fucking hitting my head on the roof. So his legs were just dangling <laughs> beneath the desk. Mu- the must have been dangling, <laughs> which is just so funny. so funny. Imagine him like, yeah, I got a gun. I'm fucking going to kill you. And his legs are just like kicking under the table. I can yeah, see well, your legs kicking under the table. Yeah, I was just going to say, no could say you're a bit of a short king yourself, Liam. Yeah. So. Don't speak since down. Since when was six foot five short? Don't speak. Since don't when? speak eye to eye to Tory Lanez. Since when that's was what six are. foot five short? Six foot six five. Yeah, you're six five. Yeah, because I'm six foot mm-hmm. and I'm way taller than you. Mm. Um, we've got a question from one of our lovely f- listeners, Carla. Do you want to know what she asks? What did she ask? And I don't know why this is in here. Top three ways to dispose of your own body, your own dead body. What the fuck does that mean, Zach? I explained it to you before. Well, Carla, I'm not sure if you know how death works, <laughs> but once you die, you can't I, move anymore. I, I think it's like you think about it as this is your one wish that you put in your will. At the top of your will, you're just oh. like, this is how I want to be sent <laughs> off. I want to be taxidermied. No, like, yeah, like I what you want, want done to with be... Your body. I want to be... I want to have Taylor Swift perform a concert at Disney World in Orlando. Is that where Disney World is? In America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want my dead body to be taken up (laughs) in a plane and like fly over (laughs) Disney World. And then they push me out and my dead body splatters on the stage and everyone gets to see it and they all get covered in my gunk. I want to be. That's good. I want to be hollowed out. So it's just Your like, mum's been hollowed out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I want to be hollowed out and then like the outside of me hardened and then I want to go to a rich family house and stay in the shed, in the dusty shed all year round in a box down deep. But then once a year on Halloween, they take me out, dust me off and put like candles inside of me and I'm in a star position and they just have the candles in me and then you can see the light inside of me. I'm like a jack-o'-lantern oh, but myself. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that would be fucking pretty sick. Mm. That's actually a really good one. Yeah. Why hasn't anyone done that? I don't know. I still want to get taxi damaged though and just live in your like house. I want to be... In this position. <laughs> yeah, that would be... <laughs> I would actually... Cause then, uh, that would be so funny. Cause then it's, <laughs> and I'd hang my keys on like one of your fingers yeah. or something. <laughs> say, say like you went to my funeral and you're all sad. <laughs> but like someone I had planned for someone yeah. to install me in your house yeah. while you were at the funeral because the coffin was empty. And then you get home and you're, you're all sad there. and you're drunk and you open and I'm just there. <laughs> yeah. Cock out yeah. <laughs> You would fucking piss yourself And then I would have gotten the last laugh And then you would be in a good mood again That would be fucking funny Doing that to your mates how, is good How what? far off do you reckon that is from happening? Taxidermy yourself Get, what, Is that not already a thing? What? Can you be? Can a person be taxidermied? Oh, I, I'd imagine I'd there's imagine some so. moral qualms with I'd it, love to but... be mummified yeah, but in a clear not, case, actually. I want to be stood up in like a wax. You know those celebrity wax factories. Mm. I just want to be like, just like one in a corner, but people still get to walk past me. But it's just my dead body, and then I slowly start to like deteriorate and stink. And everyone's like, "What the fuck? This this wax figure is like going bad." But mm. it's actually just my dead body. But they're not allowed to move me, and I slowly just like fall out onto the ground you remember when we mm. went to the museum of natural history yeah in New York? yeah i'd love to be taxidermied like that and then like have in amongst all the like fucking african animals like the lions and like fucking elephants and shit you're, you're walking through there like the cool section see them all you look in and then there's one that's just me sitting on a bed with like a rainy New York City background apartment and a fireplace and a big like polar bear rug underneath me and me laying on like a uh, 
Chesterfield couch, just fully naked. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone walks past and goes, and runs away. That's what I would love for my final frontier to be. Yeah, that would be a fucking good way to die. All right, well, here is some... No, uh, hope, well, we hope that answered your question, Carla. Yeah. Another good one would be all three of us have our heads chopped off and taxidermied and put on the wall at Doc Holidays. No, no. All three yeah. of us have our heads chopped off and put on each other's bodies. <laughs> so <we're> on opposite <laughs> bodies. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't mind, yeah. Uh, our three heads being at the front of Doc Holiday's mm. in like on the top. And Aiden's. Oh, and all, Aiden's. All like and, and Lags. Our upside down body in the boots on the roof. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that this doesn't make good. any sense to fucking listeners because they have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, well, are we doing the top three Riz lines on, on air? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I've prepared nothing for this. Yeah, I didn't even know mm. we are doing it. But... These are the top three best Riz lines to use when you're trying to uh, pick up a woman. You go first. Liam, do you want to go first? Yeah, you go. You start us off. Okay. Um, <laughs> In the what, itinerary, what it says I say, say shit ones. No, so. what did I say? Cut that. It doesn't say shit ones. What did say I say ones. recently? I, she just goes through my Instagram messages. <laughs> okay, Vegas. I got a good one. I got a good one. You walk up to a girl at a club when and for this one to work you have to be trash drunk mm. like really sloppy drunk mm. and you walk up you say hey baby <laughs> let me buy you a vodka raspberry that's and almost then, that's, the number one and then that's throw up much. on her <laughs> yeah and then throw up <laughs> throw up on yourself I've got another one when you're walking past a girl and she's clearly got a boyfriend who could <laughs> easily bash you in a fight yeah you also need to be trashed for this as well and like real, like have fucking throw up on yourself and like your eyes be all glassy and your shirt be wet and they both need to be like bone sober. Your mouth is full of HSP that you've just yeah. been yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're eating a HSP on the walk home and you look at them and you look at the chick and go, I- I'm going to have to explain this afterwards, but you go, <laughs> you like click and wink and raise your head yeah. at the chick. Yeah. And then... In front of a tough boyfriend, because that's just like if he's got the cock to do that, what yeah. else has he got the cock to do? Yeah, and she's you know thinking, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I got a good one. You walk up to a girl. This one you can do sober. <laughs> just a girl. It can be anywhere. And you walk up to her and say, "Give me your number, or I'm gonna take my own life." <laughs> that's good. That is good because it's really puts, puts them him under in a conundrum. Pump. Conundrum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another good one is um, you're almost as hot as my sister. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, another good one is um, like track a girl down <laughs> that, that you're interested in and um, sneak into her apartment at night just for like a cute little rom com meet cute. <laughs> yeah. And watch her sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then while she's sleeping, if she wakes up. You say, can we go on a date? I've got another one. Um, And that bonus points if you're naked. (laughs) I've got one. Wait, I've got a question, What if she doesn't wake up? If she doesn't wake up, then you take a photo of her while she's sleeping and you write your name and number on the Polaroid (laughs) and you leave it by a bedside. (laughs) (laughs) I've got another one. You should track down, you should anonymously like figure out her name and a lot of other things about her, like her family name, address, last um, restaurant she ate at. And then on a dark street late at night, when she's walking, you should go up to her and say, hi, babes. And when she says, do I know you? You say, no, but I know you. Say her name and then say, you live it right, this address. And then she'll say, who are you? How do you know me? And you say, I'm just a man in love. All right. So if you're, if you're struggling to break through the barrier of love and you, you have someone that you're interested in and you don't know how to make the first move, try any one of those methods. Hmm. Or and go up to them and say this. <sighs> <sighs> you're fucking odd. 
oh, and then stare at their chest the whole time. Oh, and, then, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then run away crying. And then slowly, <laughs> slowly piss yourself as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, we need to go home. Um, Actually, we don't need to go home. We if, need to go to the Richmond fucking Bowls Club and have a couple yeah. of rolls. Oh, Zach? we got no. We before we leave, we have some fan questions. That well, we don't have fan questions for us. We have fan questions that have been sent in. So these are questions that people sent in to ask some of our guests, oh. and they're just fucking. I just want to kind of showcase and highlight right, how I'll, fucking shit some of the things you guys ask. Okay, about. well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through some of these. You got them. Can. Uh, this is for a guest. Can you ask why I always cry after sex? I imagine that was for Dyson. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, How do I get women to talk to me? Well, we've just answered that. Yeah, true. Wait, that this one's not, not bad. bad. Would you rather a g- bad blowjob from your grandma or a good hand job from your mum? Mm. See, I, I'm not sure how the grandma could be bad if... If um, she's got dentures. Dentures. Yeah. But let's say for argument's sake, she's got the old naturals. That's a good one. I'm thinking, look, you're in a shit situation either way. Make lemonade you, out of lemons. Yeah, you may as well semi-enjoy it. Or in the words of David Goggins, if life gives me you lemons, I eat them motherfucking lemons. <laughs> so... Um, can you please do meth? Can you please do meth? Can you please do meth? That one's not too bad. Who asked that? Oh... Zach did. <laughs> so let's just use those to highlight that uh, you guys fucking sh- suck at answering, uh, asking questions. And you need to grow up, but also keep sending them because yeah. they're funny. <laughs> well, they're funny to look at, but send in some good ones. Can and you send stop in- burping yeah, into the mic? Right. You fucking. That's another thing that Liam does, all right? <laughs> you said this it last is- week. Did I? Yeah. Well, I'm saying it again <laughs> because it's fucking disgusting, although it's kind of funny sometimes, <laughs> but he burps. A ridiculous amount every day. Um, what are we going to call this episode of the pod? We should do something clickbaity at the end. I don't know, but send in video questions because I want to start fucking finding video questions and then playing them on the pod and they can, I don't know, react to them. Just send in video questions because Zach wants to, uh, I don't know, go through video questions and we can, uh, I don't know, react to them on the pod. Guys, Zach needs you guys to send in video questions because he cries himself to sleep every night yeah. as well as scrolling tiktok while having the heater and the lights on <laughs> what <laughs> what can you do the outro because i can't be fucked all right this is the outro time to say bye now i wish i was a quiet owl floating through the night stalking my prey the sun is out. It's a nice day. Mm-hmm. We're going to go to the Richmond Bowls Club. Perfect. It's not quite a pub. Mm. They still sell beers. We'll have a roll on the green. And then we'll cut their hedges with the shears that we brought to the club. This isn't an exclusive club like the Emerson. Go the Matildas. Good luck tonight. Fuck England. Mm. And... Fight. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> fuckers. Fuckers. I'll do it. Hey, fuck hey. you. Fuck you. I love fuck you. Fuck you! I love you guys, we should start a podcast.